like a nice place when we arrived. Sun was out, folks were going about their business, and for once, no dead bodies in sight. It was all crap, of course. As soon as they caught sight of us, things went to hell. Everybody in this place appears to be infected. Same glassy eyes, jumpy movements, and a real fondness for knives. A few look like the worms inside them have had time to mature. Some of them getting so large, they're erupting from the victims' mouths. We managed to get out of sight for a few minutes and come up with a plan. Don whipped up some of his favorite incendiary charges and gave one to each of us. This place seemed to be ground zero for the infestation, so we're gonna have to sterilize it. But not before doing a sweep to make sure we're not leaving anyone who hasn't been infected to burn. Henry needs to examine the source of the worms before we light the place up, so we'll need to tackle that at the same time while trying not to get carved up by the locals. Or in other words, just another work day. Hi, I'm Stuart. Welcome back to table for turn six of Fireteam Zero, the nursery. Uh, take a look at the videos previous in the playlist or the ones I've done before to sort of catch up on what's happening, but this is the situation now. Let's get rid of that die. Yep, we've completed one completed one objective so far we're looking for the other one and of course the, the 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 final one is to set fire to all sectors on the board so without any further ado let's uh let's press on with our plan first thing we're going to do tactics phase let's move the first player token that's going to go to Abe. Second thing tactical responses we've got a choice of two we've got this one from Abe each hero may immediately move two spaces start with the player to your left i'm not going to do that i am going to do this one from Frank. Inflict a total of 12 damage to any combination of monsters in your sector, ignoring resistance. So I'm going to play that. The reason being is because the consumed bait bags have an innate ability called entanglement, which means we can't flee if they're in the same space as us, which means we're going to be trapped here until we kill it. So that means we can kill this one, ignoring resistance. That means this has a, it's a hit points of six, and we'll do this one as well, or shall we? Or shall we do this one, maybe? I think we'll do this one. Uh, no, it has to be in our sector. So yeah, it has to be this one. So six, we'll do that one. So that's those two taken care of. They're dead. So we're going to draw cards. Frank can't draw any cards. Abe can draw two. He's gonna draw this one, which is Stock Strike. And he's going to draw this one, which is Knuckle Duster. Shad can draw four cards. Which is all the cards in his deck at the moment. And we've got Brawl, Bullet, and some really good Brawl attacks there, Puncture. So, Let's stick the brawl attacks on the bottom. Now, what I have realized in between rounds is that I keep forgetting I've got this focus ability for Abe. When you perform a bullet attack, you may reduce it as a brawl attack. Or you may resolve it as a brawl attack with the same attack for strength and range. And I should be using that more because it's less to kill these both of these monsters, it's less damage required or less hits needed to uh, kill them with brawl than it is with bullets so I should really be utilizing that more. I will try and remember. Okay let's put you down here and let's decide what we're going to do. It will be, let's just check on what happens with the, with this purge of the town. It's Okay, so any hero in a burning sector suffers a strength one brawl attack at the start of their turn. So we can't be there at the start of our turn. So what we'll do is Abe is going to go. Hmm. He's going to go. Oh, I'm trying to do anything. So you can go one, two, and go to there. Is that a good plan going to there or not?
No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think Abe should come down this way. So Abe can go from here, he can go one, and then two into this one here. And he'll take this guy with him. Okay. Frank. Hmm. I think Frank and Shad should both go the same way. So they'll go one, two. Yes, one, two. And instead of flipping this over, we'll use an action for Frank for killing. We'll just kill this guy here, I think. So it's basically two dice, get two confirmed hits. Uh, we normally need four with the reduce, reduced resistance of our focus card is three, but because of the increased resistance, again, it's back up to four. So we need four hits, two dice, and two automatic hits. So essentially we're looking for, for two hits on here. And we get three hits. So that's one, two, three, four, five from the card. This guy is dead. Finally, we will do Shad. Shad is going to use his action to drop one incendiary device in there. And then he is going to go one, and he's going to go two into here. That's our best option. So that is the end of the hero phase. So now we move directly on into the threat. Threat phase, first thing that happens is this moves to there. That means two things at this um, scenario. First of all, we draw another twist card. If a blank is rolled when activating a monster, resolve the monster's special ability. So basically that just means that the monsters are always gonna move now regardless of the activation. So we don't really need to roll the activation because we know they're gonna move. Uh, now, what also that means is because we've placed a token in here, an incendiary token, it means a adjacent sector which doesn't have a token in will also get set fire to. So I think the best thing we, for us to choose is, let's choose, well clearly this one here. We're not going to choose the one with the exit, we're not going to choose the one we're in, so that leaves this one here. So let's just stick one there. So now we've got two sectors on fire. Anytime we start our turn in a sector on fire, we take one brawl damage or one die brawl damage. Okay, let's get these uh, monsters moving. Minions first, they're gonna move one, two. No need to roll for activation because regardless of what we roll, we know they're gonna move one extra space. So they'll move to there. Same with this one, one, two, three. They're gonna move to there. Uh, they're always gonna come, yes, so that's correct, towards A for the one space away from it. Uh, nothing we can do about that. A can only do a, uh, a focused ability reaction, if you like, if they actually enter a space, which the monsters haven't. Okay, that leaves us with this one here, who is going to automatically move into here. Frank really hasn't got anything Oh, he hasn't got anything, he's got no bullets, and he can only do his focus ability for a reactive attack with bullets. So that means this guy is gonna attack Shad. And it would normally be one, it'd be two damage, but Shad's got his uh, great focus ability parry, which means we can negate all that damage. It also means that we can attack him back, which is exactly what we're going to do, I think. Yes, we are. And we're going to attack him back with we're going to attack him back with these. So basically, we've got six dice. Is there anything anybody else can help him with? Uh, nothing there, and I believe uh, Abe is just way out of range. So there's there's nothing really uh, anyone can help him with. No, so, but we do get a reroll. So we're looking at six dice and we've got four definite hits. So let's uh, see what we need. If we look at the consumed bait back there, we need six, it's got a resistance of two to brawl, which at the moment means it's got a resistance of three because of the twist card we do. So we're looking for nine, nine hits. 
Six dice. What do we get? We get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we got nine. We got nine even out, even without having the uh, using the deck of the hits. So discard those cards, and this guy move back over here so you can see what's happening. And this guy's dead. And that is all the monsters for this round done. There is nothing else on the board apart from these two which are already moved. So we'll go straight to spawning. We'll spawn the one elite, uh, one, ah, one minion first. And he spawns in six. Sorry about that, camera ran out for some reason. So now we're going to spawn the elites. And we've got seven, which is here. Uh, we've got seven again, which is here, and we've got twelve. Twelve is ah, of course it is. It's right where we want to go. Okay, so that's where we stand at the end of turn six. Let's. Uh, we've got two areas on fire now, so. Uh, Hopefully we can really get moving on the next turn. Let's hope so. Okay, catch you on turn seven. Welcome back, turn seven, fire team zero. So first thing we need to do is tactical phase, move the first player token on, that will go to Frank. Second thing is tactical responses. We've only got one and we're gonna play it. Each hero may immediately move two spaces starting the player to your left. Ace playing that. Uh, what we're gonna do is, yeah, what we're gonna do, we're gonna move Frank, we're gonna move him here. Does he ignore difficult terrain? Yes, we know we already established that from previous. Actually, ignores difficult terrain, so we're gonna put Frank there. So he's gonna move there. Um, Shad is gonna stay where he is, and Abe is gonna move into here with this guy. That's what we're gonna do. So, that's that done. Shad should stay where he is. Yes, yes, Shad will stay definitely where he is. Okay, so we need to draw cards. Uh, Abe can't draw any. Frank can draw two. He's only got two cards left. And we've got a brawl attack and a bullet attack. So let's put the, those cards up there. Oh, we're all over the place there. So, brawl. And bullet, not great for Frank, not great at all. And for Shad, he can draw three cards, but we need to shuffle up his cards first. Okay, so we've drawn cards for Shad, and he's got two brawls and a bullet attack. And now it's on to the hero phase. And it is Frank to go first. I would have liked Frank to have some more bullets, but he hasn't got any. What he does have, what he does have is grenades. Is there any way he can throw grenades into here? Would that be helpful? Um, I'm not so sure. Not so sure. Um, let's have a little think because we definitely need. Frank could do with taking both of these. Well, he could take one out, but he's only got one bullet. That's the problem. That is the problem there. Can he risk it with a grenade, brawl attack, brawl attack? Nobody's in, nobody's really in range of him apart from Abe. I think, I think the best thing to do is for Frank to move into here and try and attack this guy with a brawl attack. And we can use all of these. So basically nine dice, but we're going to use eight. Is there anything else that can be assisted? Yes. And I think we will use this one, type pattern. Able assisting with this, play before an ally performs an attack to reduce the target resistance that attack to zero. So that's what we're going to do. Abe's playing that. Frank's playing that. So we're rolling eight dice. Okay, eight dice, we need six hits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, okay, we've, we've got more than enough. So 
that means that this guy's dead. Let's move him out of the way. That's Frank's turn over because it's difficult terrain, so he moved into there. Now. What can Aid do? We should really, let's, we're gonna flip this over now or not? Let's not flip it over just yet. Aid can attack one of these when it comes into here. Frank can attack another one when it comes to here. So we've covered on that. So we should be able to take care of both of these. So is it worth flipping that over now or not? I would say no. Let's not flip that over just yet. Let's move to... Actually, it's not even his go, actually. It should be Shad's go first. And Shad will use an action and he will... He's going to flip this. Shad's going to use his action to flip that. Let's just go for it. Floating Rift. You jump back with a yell as a monster appears right in front of you. Instinctively you attack just as the monster vanishes. As a free action, you may perform an immediate attack against a monster anywhere on the battlefield as if it were in your location. Okay, let's have a look. Let's move, let's see, uh, what have we got there? Let me see, so, any monster on the battlefield. These ones are not gonna reach us. This one is gonna, one, two. This one's definitely gonna reach us, so we're probably better off attacking that one. I think. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yes. Um, I'm not sure which one to do, this one or that one, because we're going to leave ourselves wide open. Uh, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this one. So five dice, and we're gonna try and kill this fella over here. Not sure if that's the best idea, but we'll see. And we need five hits. Five dice, five hits. <laughs> okay, well that didn't work. So all done there is wasted two cards, which we could have sorely done without losing. Okay, so we didn't get that. That's a disaster. So that brings us to the end of the hero phase. So we'll now move on to the threat phase. Okay, let's move to the threat phase. <clears throat> threat track moves up one. It's that eight now. And we need to move our monsters, or rather do the monster and attack phase. So let's see how we get on with that. We don't need to look at the dive chart at the time being because we know the monsters are going to move the full amount because of the threat card that we, we drew on the last round. So let's start with these two guys here. So his base is going to go one. As soon as that one arrives there, Frank is going to take a shot at him I think with this one here uh, it's plus two so it's two dice plus two damage and we need to do uh, four damage so basically two dice we need to get two hits let's see how we get on with that okay we do get a reroll let's see what we get yeah we get three hits that's enough to take care of that guy so this guy doesn't even reach us he's dead this guy will do exactly the same and move to here, and he will actually get to here. At which point, I think Abe will try and take him out. Uh, Abe can use these two cards, so we're looking for five dice. And we're gonna need four hits on five dice. With a reroll, so five dice, one, two, three, four, Five, let's see. We're looking for four hits. Four brawl. One, two, three, 
four, exactly four, we don't need a reroll. So again, this guy is gone. So far, so good. This guy here is gonna go one, two. We know he's gonna move one more, as we said before. And he is gonna attack Shad. Normally that'd be one hit. However, as we know, Shad can use his special ability on his focus card to negate damage, which he will do. And he will try and on his other focus card, he's got the ability to do a reaction against anyone who attacks him. So he will do that. And he will try and kill this, uh, this bait back rolling four dice. Looking for Brawl. No one can help him. So we need four hits. What do we get? Oh, geez, okay. So we didn't get it. One, two, we only got two hits. Well, unfortunate, we didn't manage to take him out because I was really hoping to do that, but that's what happens. So then these guys move one, and we know they'll move an additional one, move to there, and there, and there, and that puts those guys there. So let's respawn what we've got left, which is two bait bags and one consumed bait bag. Uh, that's a seven for the bait bag. Uh, where is seven? Seven is here. And the 12, which is here, which can't spawn because we've got that secured. And a 10, which is, where is 10? 10 is over here. And finally, the consumed bait bag goes on an 11, which, oh, and he actually can spawn here. This is not great. Not great at all. Shad is surrounded. Okay, that brings us to the end of turn seven. So thanks for watching. Let's see if we can get ourselves out of this, uh, this predicament on the, on the next turn. Um, I don't, don't hold out, I don't hold out much hope to be honest, but we can but try. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.